Well, welcome back to a new episode of the Triumph Roadster Restoration. Today, I've got a few oily jobs to do, which include putting new oil in both the diff and the gearbox, and we'll also be continuing on the saga of the blocked fuel line. So, what are we waiting for? Let's get going. So, I'm going to start today with the easiest job, which is putting some more oil in the gearbox. Last time we drained it out, and there was some sort of white goo in the bottom. I think that should just be condensation mixing with the oil. Having sat for so long, it's no surprise that there would be some in there. And also considering that the oil level was quite low, that doesn't surprise me either. So I'm just going to fill it up with some new oil. I've got some Penrite GB40, which is recommended for gearboxes which took SAE 40 or 50 oils, which this one did, it took SAE 50. Uh, so I'm going to remove the dipstick and plug here, which of course, is clean and dry and I will put the funnel in and fill it up again. So that was one litre. The gearbox capacity is two pints so this should be just under the full mark. This is like playing the operation game where you avoid touching the sides. And yes, it's difficult to show, but the oil is just coming up to the full mark. So that is the perfect quantity. That's done. And now I can move on to the diff oil. So of course, to do the diff oil, we need to look in the rear of the car and I will do that by folding up the rear windscreen like so. Now access to the diff is under this slightly raised bit of carpet here so I'm going to have to carefully peel all this back and then take out the screws just like I did for the fuel tank sender. Oh. A lot of them seem to be missing already. There's one I can see. that took a bit of effort but I have now eventually got all three screws out I can see why they didn't put in the rest so this cover should now be not too difficult to remove I think I have to slide it backwards and then flip it up over the carpet and then that'll allow me to slide it out towards the front oh finally I can put that to one side and admire the beautiful diff. Now, I assume that this here is the filler and the dipstick as well. So I'll look for the right spanner to put on there. All right, I found a suitable socket. So I'll try and undo this now. Gosh, got it off. The camera nearly went with it. All right, so I've looked in the manual and the differential takes two and three quarter pints of EP140. So I've got some Penrite mild EP which has a rating of or it's for use where SAE 140 oils were recommended. So I'll remove the dipstick like that, put that somewhere clean which is hard to find around here. So I've now put in one litre of the EP oil and 
by my reckoning, two and three quarter pints should be about 1.6 litres. So I'm just going to remove the funnel and check it on the dipstick and see how far up the dipstick we've got. So it was registering on the dipstick, but it wasn't exactly obvious. So I'm just going to put in the correct amount as that should be what is required. I'll move on to the next pot and put in about half. So that's the dipstick in. Since it's up on axle sands, I might just give the wheels a turn to work the oil in a little bit, and then I'll come back round and check the level again. So I've moved the wheels a bit and worked the oil into the gears. So now if I take out the dipstick, hopefully it should be at the right level. And there you are. That's about perfect. There's the cover back on. I've just put it on loosely because it's likely that I'll want to change the oil again once I get the car running. Now, on to something else. Now I'm just going to turn my attention back to the fuel line for a bit, because I have two new items which I plan to use in yet another attempt to try and unblock it. I have a length of wire and some extra penetrating, penetrating oil. So I'm going to spray the oil down the fuel line and then, once again, put the wire down, just as I did the last time using the fishing line and the weed trimmer line. Maybe I'll be able to unblock it, but unfortunately at this stage it is looking rather like I'll have to have a new line made up. just occurred to me while I've got the inspection camera out and looking at the fuel tank I might as well use it again and try and look down the petrol line and see if we can see that blockage so I've got it here I'll record it so I can show you on the screen and let's have a peek the camera will fit down the line but unfortunately it won't quite go around the bend but let's see if we can just see inside so that's the petrol line doesn't look as rusty as i'd feared that end there must be the corner but if i rotate it i think we're now looking just whoops there we can just see around the corner and that could be the blockage also while I've got the inspection camera out why don't we take out a spark plug and see what we can see in the bores One spark plug removed, one inspection camera in place. I would assume that that's the top of the piston. It's very difficult to tell.
That there doesn't look particularly good. Would have hoped it would be a bit shinier than that. Hopefully it's just oil. I think the lumpy bits will be soot deposits. Not sure about this one. Maybe I'll try a different piston and see what that's like. So here we are in piston number two, the second from the front. And if we look at the camera, oops. Oh, I think we are looking at the bore now, but the resolution on the camera isn't exactly good enough to give us a great impression of what it's like. I can see a little bit of scoring down there, unless that's a honing mark. Yeah, well, can I direct it onto the top of the piston? Ooh. Yes, that's definitely the top of the piston. There's a little blob in the centre. It doesn't look too bad. I think most of that sort of gunky stuff will be oil. Probably a combination of oil and soot. Well, the main thing is, at least there's no huge soot deposit and there aren't any large holes, as far as I can tell. I think we'll have to get the engine running and see how it performs before doing anything too in-depth. Well, that didn't yield anything particularly exciting, but it does show that there isn't a complete mess inside the engine. I'll have to look at the footage afterwards and see what I can see on there, because the screen is very difficult to look at and, it's, and the camera is especially difficult to control. I've been poking at the fuel line with the wire for a while now and I haven't had any great success. I've tried it from both ends and the blockage is still firmly there. I can't even get the bit of wire to the rearmost blockage. It'll only go as far as the rear axle, so... I have to keep trying, but I'm afraid I think we're looking at a new fuel line. Well, I am now back under the car once again, but this time it is because it has been suggested to me that I probably ought to look in the sump just to make sure there isn't any mess in there before I start the engine and have the oil circulate. Because if the sump is full of sort of old oily mess and dirt and things, then I really don't want that getting up into the oil pump and the oil galleries. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drain out the oil again that we put in last time. I'll drain it into this clean container I've got here and then I'll take the sump off, look in the sump and then put it back on and put the oil all back in. The reason I didn't do this the first time was I was rather hoping to get away without doing it because I have reason to believe that the engine was rebuilt in the 1980s after the car came off the road. And I wouldn't have thought it's done many miles since, but it probably would be a good idea if I take it off and look inside anyway. Better to clean it out now than have it all ruin the engine and have to deal with that afterwards. So I'm going to drain the oil out again, and then you'll see me taking the nuts off the sump. So that's the oil out yet again. It's nice and clear still, so hopefully it should be fine. I will put the screw back in. And now I will look at taking the bolts out of the sump itself. Well, here's the oil that's come out the sump. I'm very glad we're removing the sump, because clearly, considering that we put this in last time and it was clean, there's obviously some dirt in there that needs to be removed. So I think the removal of the sump is definitely the next job. After more than an hour of fiddling, I have been able to get 
some of the bolts out at the sides. They are the most difficult. They are up here. I've laid them out like this so that you can see and also so that I can point out that some of them are different lengths. There seem to be three different lengths. Some of them have the thread going right down to the head of the bolt and other ones have a longer non-threaded area and some of them have a smaller non-threaded area which is completely peculiar to me and unfortunately I only have a vague idea of where they came from. This is roughly where I think each one came from in relation to the position on the sump. So now I'm going to go over the rest at the front and at the rear of the sump with the ratchet and hopefully the sump should be easily removed. I've now got all of the bolts out of the sump, save for the two here and here. There's one at the front and one at the back, which I've left in, and they are currently holding the sump in place. As you can see, it is loose. So I will now pop underneath, remove those two, and we'll have the sump off. There we are. One sump. So here is the sump then. As we can see in the bottom, there is a reasonable quantity of black goo, but it's not too bad. It does show that there was some care taken over the engine, at least in part of its life in the past. I'm now going to give everything a good clean. I'll take out this plate, another four bolts, yippee. I'll give everything a really good clean, remove the oil in the bottom, and then we'll have a look at it after that. While we've got the sump off, we can have a look inside the bottom of the engine. You can see the crankshaft here and the connecting rods for the pistons. Up there, if we look very far in, we can see the pistons themselves. And it all looks in relatively good condition. It's somewhat difficult to tell. There's a bit of dirt on this oil filter. Or is that just part of the filter itself? Might have to take that off and give that a clean as well. But on the whole, it looks pretty good. There's no rust or anything in there, so... Plenty of shiny metal. Good. Now let's get on with cleaning the sump. Well, here is my nice clean sump. I've washed it all down in petrol and then washed all that out of it, and it's now lovely and dry. So I can put this bit back in. This bit is interesting. There's clearly been um, something which hit it with quite some force there in the past and actually managed to break the whole flat bit of metal. And there's a chunk missing out of it here as well, so I may have to look for a new one of these in the long term, especially because it's slightly rusty, but I'm not too worried about the rust. But it'll do for the time being, and I will put it back in, and hopefully then it'll be ready to go back on the car. There wasn't too much dirt in it, it was mainly just the fine oily silt that you find in the bottom of most engines, so I'm not too worried about the state of this engine yet.
I was about satisfied with the cleanliness of the sump, so I've now popped it back on the car and I've put one bolt in the front and one in the back. I'll now go around and do the rest, and once I've done that, I'll torque them all down to the correct torque setting, which I need to find out from the manual. Well, that's finally all of the bolts back on the sump. Oh, there goes an hour and a half of my life. But I eventually managed to get even the most difficult ones in here in. Yes, the oil filter is missing. That's because I'm waiting on a spin-on adapter. Um, those ones and the ones on the other side, which were completely obscured by the exhaust, were by far the most difficult ones to get at. Let's see if I can show you these ones. Even impossible to show on camera. I think it's time for a nice cup of tea. Just as a little bit extra, I decided not to put the oil that came out of the engine back in because it doesn't look quite as clean as I'd hoped it did. It, it is new, it's just been sitting in the shed for a while. So to treat the engine, I've actually gone out and bought some new 20W50 mineral oil and I'm going to put that in because it is new, fresh and clean. So I'll put that in now and hopefully we'll be able to make it up to the 14 pints that the engine takes. So that's five litres into our nice clean sump. Let's look at, ooh, that's all on the dipstick. Let's look at the dipstick. And it's showing just over half. So that's about what we expected. So I will now put another three or so litres of the next pot into the engine. So that's another two and a bit litres in the engine, all sitting down there in a nice clean sump. And the dipstick is showing almost full. Uh, yeah, it's just up to the mark. Of course, it will go down ever so slightly when we put the new oil filter on, which has yet to arrive, I should clarify. But that is pretty good for the moment. So I'm pleased with that, and I will put the rocker cover back on. Well, that's about all we've got time for this episode. I'm very pleased we've been able to get the oil into the diff and the gearbox, and we've even had that little peek inside the engine with the inspection camera. Next time, hopefully we'll be able to get the engine a teensy bit closer to running, but other than that, I will say thank you very much for watching, and ta-ta for now. <laughs>